Yeah. Uh, very good evening, uh, uh, dear my professional colleagues. I, I welcome all you to this uh, the uh, webinar on uh, insulins. And uh, thanks to Mr. Hamid for his kind introduction. And I am thankful to Novanadis for giving me this opportunity to be the speaker of the first speaker of this uh, session. And uh, followed by the second speaker, Dr. Sepuri Tirumala Devi, ma'am. And uh, I am Dr. Sepuri Krishna Mohan. I am an endocrinologist at my own center, Sepuri Diabetes and Endocrine Center, Karnul. So, Today we are going to talk about uh, the unique uh, formulation that is uh, the only one and only co-formulation available on the earth that is uh, the, the insulin uh, uh, the aspect and uh, the insulin declodec. It is a combination of uh, the insulin aspect uh, and the declodec. So, No people have given a brief introduction about the the, the centenary celebrations which were over in 2022 actually, the 100 years of uh, the insulin actually. So, uh, crores and crores of people are uh, living with the, the discovery of insulin by Dr. Grant Frederick Banting and that was done at uh, the University of Toronto. Basically, he was an orthopedic surgeon but uh, at a very engaged, uh, he, he determined himself to, to, to discover this particular insulin for that uh, he bothered his, uh, the, the professor of physiology at that time uh, the, the head of the Department of Physiology, Mr. J.J.R. Uh, uh, MacLeod. So, after some time, he was not convinced actually why this uh, young man uh, who is an orthopedic surgeon, he says he wanted to discover insulin and all. But finally, Banting uh, succeeded uh, in making MacLeod uh, give him a lab and uh, 10 dogs an unused dirty small room with 10 dogs. So, he started this with uh, Charles H. Best, so who was the assistant for this particular uh, gentleman who discovered the insulin, Grand Frederick Bante. And uh, after he started his uh, this thing, the, the research work, and uh, prior to that, uh, Vaughan Mering, was the scientist who has proven that the pancreatectomized dog developed diabetes. So, he started doing the same procedure and he induced diabetes and then he started extracting the, the, uh, uh, the insulin from the beta cells of the uh, dog. So, initially he prepared a crude uh, insulin which was not purified and uh, uh, the Guinness Book of Records, uh, it is given that uh, Leonard Thompson, a boy aged around 14 years, was uh, suffering from type 1 diabetes and he was about to die in the, the Royal General Hospital, uh, Toronto. So, the committee, ethics committee in 20 one actually, so gave uh, permission for this uh, Dr. James uh, Grant Frederick to give this injection to that dying boy. So, the blood sugar was somewhere around 400 to 450 and he gave the insulin, but it did not show a drastic uh, uh, relief at all. So, it was the blood sugar was reduced to tune of only 30 to 50 points. So, then uh, they made out that, uh, so this is not a purified pro product. So, then the, the young uh, 
chemist James Colip uh, has come into play and he started uh, doing this uh, the, the work of purification of the crude insulin. Then again, the, the insulin was purified and then the same boy was given this particular uh, uh, insulin and it started showing the dramatic uh, this thing, the ketones disappeared. He was in DKA actually, the type 1 boy, the Leonard Thompson and then later on uh, he improved and uh, he survived until 28 years, like uh, another 14 years of grace period with this uh, basic insulin and uh, very unfortunately he died of uh, pneumonia. So there was no antibiotics at that time and uh, again uh, the Nobel Committee in 2023 decided to give Nobel Prize to James uh, Frederick Banting and uh, to the Professor uh, J.J.R. MacLeod, Professor of Physiology, who has done nothing but for giving the dirty room on the dogs. But uh, this uh, grant, uh, Frederick Banting, uh, refused that Nobel Prize uh, and he asked the committee of the Nobel Prize uh, that uh, the prize should be shared uh, among the four equally. That is, uh, uh, with the with the Charles H. Best and James uh, Quillip. Uh, then Nobel Committee again uh, reconsidered and said, okay, uh, permitting uh, the Grant Federing to share his Nobel Prize with uh, Charles H. Best. And uh, though it was not liked by the Professor uh, J.J. R. MacLeod, who was little bit selfish, he was not like uh, Grant Frederick Banting actually. So, he uh, shared his Nobel Prize with uh, the, uh, James Colip. So, on record, it is it is for MacLeod and uh, the, the main discoverer, the Grand Frederick Banting. So, later on, the greatest uh, help uh, the Banting did to the human kind is, he said uh, th there is no patency, no royalty for insulin. That was the greatest thing. Otherwise, you would have been uh, at least uh, 100 times more uh, a uh, wealthier person than uh, the, 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 um, uh, the uh, Bill Gates or uh, this uh, uh, the other uh, the richest people on the earth. So he re revised his will again, and he said, "It it doesn't belong to me." And it doesn't belong to my successors or my legal heirs also. It belongs only to the patients, that's all. So, then Novonadis came into scene and okay, they, 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 they started producing the insulin in bulk and Eli Lilly also joined ants and these are the two companies uh, which produce the commercial insulin actually. So, then you know the scenario. And prior to 1920, 22, no type 1 boy survived for more than 3 to 6 months in the entire uh, history. So, the treatment was only like uh, starvation, starvation, starvation. And they used to die of uh, the diabetic ketos acidosis and uh, no mother on the uh, earth suffering from uh, the gestational diabetes mellitus gave birth to a live child actually. So, that is the greatest uh, aspect of insulin. So, with this uh, brief introduction, I think uh, we will get into the sessions. Yeah. Today we are going to talk about uh, this particular topic, uh, the clinical perspective on the complexities and the challenges of uh, diabetes management in India. And this is my financial disclosure. And today's agenda is divided into four parts actually, the state of uh, nation, 
and uh, the need of insulin therapy, how to initiate insulin and the last one is the choice of insulin at initiation. And coming to the first part, uh, you know that uh, the uh, development of type 2 diabetes is progressive. It's a relentless process. Once, once you get diabetes, it doesn't stop, no? it, it progresses. And uh, every time uh, uh, I tell you the natural course of uh, the uh, type 2 diabetes, that is the pathophysiological scenario behind the type 2 diabetes is, on the one hand it is an normoglycemia, slowly the patient gets into this particular state of uh, impaired fasting glucose, followed by the impaired uh, glucose tolerance and then on to over diabetes. This is the natural uh, history and uh, we always should remember uh, my mentor uh, uh, the Rolf Anthony DiFranjo who said uh, from the theory of uh, the triumvirate, uh, he postulated the theory of uh, the ominous octet actually. The, the basic uh, eight culprits uh, which are involved in the pathophysiology of development of type 2 diabetes. This was uh, uh, done in the, the ADA scientific sessions uh, uh, at uh, New Orleans uh, in 2019 and the, that was, he was the speaker for this, uh, the, the Banting's lecture. So, I was, uh, we both were physically present to uh, listen to Dr. Ralph uh, Anthony DiFranjo. The normal regulation of glucose metabolism is determined by a feedback loop involving the islet beta cell and insulin sensitive issues, tissues. And uh, on the left hand side, you can see that it starts with the, the insulin resistance. The, the, the pathology is simple. One is insulin resistance and the second is insulinopenia. And uh, we as Asians, especially the Southeast Asian, that is the Indian uh, subcontinent, uh, we have got uh, more of insulin resistance uh, than insulinopenia when compared to the Caucasians, the whites, uh, they have more of insulinopenia rather than the insulin resistance. So, the insulin resistance dominates, uh, predominates in Indian scenario. So, these are the, the realities uh, of the pathophysiology uh, and the, and the socio-economic and the cultural variations. Uh, what uh, uh, we have uh, when compared to the Caucasians. So, that is the reason uh, the treatment has become so complex uh, as far as our Indian uh, uh, type 2 diabetes patients are concerned actually. So, and uh, the beta cells increase insulin output to maintain the normal glucose tolerance and uh, so, the insulin resistance leads to progressive beta cell failure on the one hand and, and it, this is a, a vicious cycle. So, it is vice versa. So, again uh, the progressive beta cell failure leads to more of insulin resistance and put together uh, that, that leads to postprandial plasma glucose levels uh, and they begin to rise uh, leading to plasma glucose uh, uh, fasting plasma glucose levels start rising, that is uh, what we called uh, the impaired fasting glucose and uh, then the, the, the uh, impaired uh, uh, glucose tolerance that is all the time uh, the diagnosis of uh, uh, in impaired glucose uh, tolerance is done by 75 grams of uh, the glucose and uh, you need to test the, the 2 hour post glucose 75 grams. So, then if it is in between 140 to 199, it is uh, the IGT and uh, if the blood sugars are uh, in between 100 to 125, it is impaired fasting glucose and the normal is fasting is less than 100 is considered normal that the patient does not have anything and uh, the post lunch or the the two hour uh, this thing uh, is uh, l l post glucose less than 140 means that the patient is not uh, suffering from diabetes and the, the intermediary phase we have that is cat on the wall that is called the pre-diabetes and next uh, they move on to over diabetes. 
and this progressive beta cell failure determines the rate of uh, the disease progression on the uh, other hand and uh, that leads to decline in the insulin secretion and further uh, the prolonged the chronic stimulation with the glucose and non glucose secreted oxalate to the beta cell exhaustion so that is what we call uh, the pancreatic bankruptcy always remember whenever the pancreatic functioning pancreatic beta cell reserve goes below 75% that is uh, the, the existing uh, functioning uh, beta cells are around 25% or less than that uh, so nothing is going to be fruitful other than insulin no void would act and uh, in this particular scenario what i said that is called almost uh, pancreatic bankruptcy so 100% beta cells will uh, die in case of type 1 diabetes and uh, type 2 diabetes you have some amount of insulin but that is not sufficient to cope with the the, the uh, food intake uh, the one takes so it is not able to maintain the carbohydrate uh, metabolism and the equilibrium homeostasis is not maintained and uh, the diabetic burden in india lies uh, like on the left hand side you can see the uh, the icmr 2021 uh, and on the right hand side you can see the world health organization what it says is the prevalence of diabetes in india stands at 11.4% and 15.3% of the people have pre diabetes and in 2021 the india the the uh, number of diabetes is around uh, 101 million and uh, it, it is the latest uh, data earlier uh, we used to say 77 million which is wrong uh, as per the the international uh, the, the diabetes federation 9th atlas but 10th atlas they have revised actually and now the current one running is the 10th atlas of international diabetes federation brussels belgium and uh, the number of pre diabetes is 136 million and according to who more than 50% of the people are unaware of their diabetic status which leads to the health complications if not detected and treated early this holds good as far as the diabetes is concerned as well as the hypertension is concerned the hypertension is still worse than this so even 60% and more than that who are suffering from hypertension in india they don't know that they have hypertension and this is not totally different from the, the so called uh, the the uh, world's number one uh, big boss uh, the the most developed country uh, the, the united states of america also the scenario is same only 50% of the people know that they have hypertension the remaining 50% of the patients who have hypertension in the united states of america they don't know that they have hypertension this is the scenario in the developed countries are the developing countries so and under developed countries it is still worse yeah the burden of diabetes in india so 101 million people with uh, diabetes and uh, the two percent higher average even c the uh, ada uh, recommendation of uh, the target uh, uh, avnc uh, uh, to the goal is uh, around or less than 7% and uh, in our scenario it is uh, the 2% is more than the the in, uh, 7 that is mean that means uh, most of the people uh, they, they are maintaining uh, around 9 or more percent of the hp avnc and only 16% of the population who are taking the treatment are controlled on therapy. So all this and the population that has relatively earlier, the why why Indians uh, say are, are the very peculiar is that the diabetes occurs at least 10 years prior to that of uh, when compared to Caucasians and we have higher insulin resistance when compared to Caucasians and greater insulin secretory of defect compared to their western counterparts. So coming to the Asian Indian phenotype, uh, the, the four classes were the thin fat Indians, uh, the higher insulin resistance uh, 
early decline in the beta cell mass, higher risk for diabetes complications. In a subject who eats three times a day, 50% of the day is spent in the postprandial state. So, Indian scenario is worse going to high carbohydrate diet. So, you take the all parts like uh, south to north, uh, east to west and the central part of India, all the five parts of India on an average they take around uh, 60 to 70 percent uh, of carbohydrate in their uh, daily total meal which is relatively very very high. On an average it is around some 60 to 65 percent not less than that. So, on the, the right hand side, you can see the, the, the bar diagram showing uh, the first one, uh, the postprandial state, uh, and the post absorptive stage is light blue, and uh, dark blue is postprandial state, uh, and uh, the green is uh, the fasting state. You can, you can still see the, the breakfast, uh, you find uh, more of uh, this particular uh, the, the, the postprandial state and uh, the, the uh, post uh, uh, absorptive state than the, the fasting state and uh, even after the lunch the scenario is same and the dinner is uh, same same and prior to breakfast only we find uh, the patient in uh, fasting state. So, most of the time the patient is in the postprandial phase which is uh, very very important with re re regards to the development of cardiovascular disease and uh, the mortality goes up and the morbidity goes up. If the, uh, the patient uh, maintains a normal fasting uh, glucose and an abnormal postprandial excursions. So, several studies have proven that uh, the major study, seven major studies out of which the largest being the Honolulu study. Honolulu is the 50th state of uh, the United States of America, which is very far away from this uh, United States of America that is uh, the, the Hawaii, the capital city of uh, Hawaii is called uh, Honolulu. So, it is uh, somewhere uh, midway in between uh, the uh, this uh, Las Vegas, Los Angeles and San Diego on, on one side and the Japan on the other side, it is midway in the sea. So, treatment strategy should address both the meal related and fasting hyperglycemia for optimum HPA1C control because you want to maintain uh, the, 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 the HPA1C, the all are important. So, the fasting plasma glucose must be controlled as well as the postprandial plasma glucose is controlled. Then only you get uh, the reasonable HPA1C levels. And high carbohydrate diet is a common Indian reality. We know that, okay. So, the, the northern part, uh, you find 63 percent and again uh, the 61 percent and the the, the eastern side and then and, and these uh, the 66 and the 65 on the uh, eastern part and the and the western part 61 the central part being 67 percent and the southern part is uh, 61 on an average uh, the hpa1c is around uh, 8.56 uh, plus or minus 1.8 milligram per deciliter and the fasting glucose is 172 milligram per deciliter plus or minus uh, like 61.9 milligram per deciliter and the postprandial glucose uh, which is terribly high 253.6 that is plus or minus 92.1. So, for an ideal, the, for an identical carbohydrate load, uh, this is the CISA mechanism when compared to the Caucasians and the South Asians. Uh, the postprandial glucose peaks uh, two to three times uh, larger in uh, the, the, uh, the South Asians, that is the Indian population, when compared to the Caucasians. So, this leads to, uh, in the long term, leads to the increased incidence of the microvascular complications as well as the microvascular complications. And uh, need for different insulin requirements, especially higher mealtime insulin doses. And the glycemic response to carbohydrates is different uh, in all the eth ethnic groups. You can you can clearly see the the different uh, glycemic responses to the same carbohydrate containing food or glucose load uh, have been reported across the populations. Uh, the Asians on the left hand side, you can see Asians present uh, higher glycemic responses than the Caucasians following a common breakfast cereal that is 60 percent higher, 63 percent higher. 
and a beverage containing 50 grams of glucose that is 29 percent higher than that of the, the Caucasians. And for an identical carbohydrate load, South Asians exhibit postprandial glucose peaks that are two to three times larger than the Caucasians. So that is uh, the, the that is what what it says is the 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 need for a different insulin in our Indian scenario, and uh, the requirements especially are higher uh, the the meal time insulin dose. So, patients do not have good glycemic control despite being on multiple OADs. You can clearly see that uh, the we start, they, 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 they are starting with the one, one OAD, uh, add on to two OADs and three OADs and four OADs uh, and uh, the, the, then we, we, we tend to start uh, insulin. So, this is not the way we, we are supposed to and uh, see uh, the, the, the number of OADs increase uh, still. Uh, the, the, the A1C goes down actually. This is because of the beta cell failure actually. So, after adding insulin, the situation improves and uh, this is the inference of this uh, bar diagram on the left hand side. Addition of subsequent OAD does not offer benefit. This is the take home message. And on the right hand side, you can see use of multiple OADs driven by convenience, acceptance by the patients and limited consultation time. And successive OADs uh, the provide a lessening effect and uh, the substantial benefit from the initiating insulin. So, the adherence to lifestyle modification measures uh, uh, is uh, poor actually. You can, you can uh, see this particular uh, the bar diagram on the left hand side which shows the lack of exercise, age, smoking, uh, hypertension, the other, co other comorbidities and obesity, the dyslipidemia and the the positive family history and uh, you can clearly see that uh, Diab Care India 2011 uh, which was uh, studied in uh, 6000 odd uh, type 2 diabetes patients and uh, only 56.54.6 uh, uh, patients are uh, complained to the dietary advice only 37.2 follow the advice uh, as far as the exercise is concerned. Good dietary and the exercise practices would help to tackle hyperglycemia. Practically few patients only can significantly change the dietary habits and adopt exercise. See, this is the Indian reality actually. So, coming to the second part, uh, the need of insulin therapy and early intensive therapy for reduction of uh, the risk of complications. You can see every 1% reduction of A1C that leads to 14 percent reductions in the heart attacks and 12 percent reductions in the strokes and 37 percent reductions in the microvascular disease. That is the reason why we always say that uh, the microvascular complications are more uh, the glycemic uh, dependent uh, whereas the macrovascular complications are not uh, purely glycemic dependent because the, 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 uh, you take uh, the coronary artery disease or the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease which includes uh, this particular uh, the coronary artery disease and the strokes. Uh, they are multifactorial in origin. The etiology is so wide that only diabetes alone is not responsible for this macrovascular complications. As far as micro is concerned, so it is basically dependent on this particular the blood sugar control. So the lower limb amputation or the fatal peripheral vascular disease is reduced. Both are same, the peripheral vascular disease, PVD or the peripheral lateral disease, uh, PAD, PAD is reduced by 43 percent uh, and deaths uh, are related to diabetes, uh, it is reduced by 21 percent. The United Kingdom prospective diabetes study, the prospective observational study in 23 hospital based clinics in England, Scotland and Northern Ireland, uh, that is the landmark trial so far in the history of uh, the, the, the diabetes. And uh, the, uh, the number of patients were around uh, uh, 4,500 and change and, uh, and uh, 3,642 included in the analysis of the relative risk. UKPDS started in 1977 and uh, it was reviewed after 10 years, 87 and 97, 20 years are over and again uh, 2007 it was reviewed and 2017 now it is called. Uh, 
UKPLS ongoing study. So, still going on. So, benefits of insulin therapy because uh, insulin is a pleiotrophic drug actually. So, see apart from uh, reducing the blood sugars, it exerts uh, so many other beneficial effects and then we call it a pleiotrophic drug. So, the few pleiotrophic drugs we have is the first one is insulin and the second is uh, the, the, the statin and third is metformin and fourth is the SGLT2 inhibitors. So, this insulin exerts the cardioprotective and the neuroprotective and anti apoptotic effects and it lowers the blood sugar and vasodilatation and platelet inhibition and beta cell rest and improvement in the function and the anti thrombotic effect and the anti accident effect and it has got the anti inflammatory effect also. So, so Having all these uh, properties, uh, the way we call insulin a pleiotrophic drug actually. So, these are the recommendations of RSSDI, this is uh, the, the clinical practice recommendations 2022 for the usage of insulin. Avoid uh, using insulin as a threat, uh, alleviate uh, the patient's anxiety about the insulins actually, that is uh, the clinician's part, uh, the, uh, do, don't. Uh, uh, threaten the patient that uh, unless you take insulin, you are going to die. This this type of conversation should not be in between the clinician and the the patient. You should you should counsel uh, with patients and counsel uh, very honestly. Counsel uh, so that uh, the, the the patient uh, doesn't feel that the doctor is so rude. Actually, so the insulin therapy should be considered in all patients. Uh, failing to achieve glycemic targets on three oral agents or the A1C is around or more than 9% insulin is mandatory as per the American Diabetes Association and the American College of Endocrinology and the American Association by the AAS that is American Association by the Clinical Endocrinologist. The patient related barriers to the insulin initiation hypoglycemia, personal failure, renal phobia, psychological and change in lifestyle, weight gain, cost, myths and misconceptions and the burdensome regimes and insulin illiteracy. And the physician also has some barriers actually to initiate insulin. The, the compassion fatigue and the burdensome regimes and poor and inadequate communication, lack of time per patient fear of doctor shopping and adverse effects of the insulin therapy. So, this slide shows the contributing factors to diabetic burden of India. The, the, see the Indian reality is totally different and the, the patient barrier what we said and the physician's barrier what we said and finally, the patient with the disability is the ultimate sufferer. And uh, coming to third part, how to initiate insulin. And insulin conversation should be like this, a conversation about insulin initiation should be started shortly after the diagnosis. You just put a word about insulin, what happens in diabetes? See, the insulin levels, they go down and on the other hand, you have insulin resistance. Whatsoever the insulin you have is not properly utilized by the, the liver, fat and muscle. That is the reason you are not able to get back to normalcy. And the basic culprit in both, either the insulin resistance or insulin apnea is the reduced levels of insulin. So, tell the patient honestly that you do not have insulin, but to start with, I do not need to give you insulin at this particular point. So, you can, it can be managed with the, the other modalities. So the only exception in the field of endocrinology is only the type 2 diabetes, wherein you, can, you have uh, multiple modalities of uh, the oral drugs or the injectable anti hyperglycemic drugs. Whereas, uh, the, the basic principle in endocrinology is, so the replacement therapy. Suppose, uh, the LT4 is uh, 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 low in uh, hypothyroidism, you just have to give LT4 only. Nothing works apart from LT4, like growth hormone, okay. You have to give only growth hormone. but. The, to the only exception being the type 2 diabetes mellitus where there are multiple modalities of actions because I said the, the, the ominous octet postulated by Rolf Anthony DiFranjo 
that is the eight uh, pathophysiological culprits which contribute to the hyperglycemia in, in different different aspects and different different parts. So, the timely conversation provides an opportunity to set a positive context for insulin therapy. This helps to prevent a sense of guilt uh, or personal failure regarding insulin initiation among patients with type 2 diabetes. Healthcare providers should focus on open-ended questions and uh, identify the need of patient uh, and uh, address any concerns regarding the insulin therapy. And uh, the sample conversation is given in between the patient and the doctor. Diabetes is a progressive disorder and insulin is the only option that we may have to consider in the future. The, 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 this should be conveyed very politely to the patient at the, at the time of diagnosis or the second visit. When the body reaches uh, the, 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 uh, an insulin deficient state, insulin has to be supplemented to ensure good long term glycemic control and to prevent the complications. And uh, starting an insulin does not mean that you have uh, not managed your sugar well, it is uh, just the natural course of the disease. This is very important. And coming to the last part, the choice of insulin at initiation. The common realities of uh, the, the Indian uh, the type 2 diabetes scenario. This is the survey called impact survey. The bar diagram clearly shows uh, an insulin regime with uh, best glycemic control and uh, a simple insulin regime where the, 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 you can see the, the respondents actually. The number is 10.3 in the first one and the respectively 7.1. And an insulin regime which can balance uh, efficacy, safety and convenience is 82.6%. Majority of the uh, respondent, uh, the healthcare professionals uh, preferred uh, an insulin regime that can offer efficacy, safety and convenience uh, at initiation and while continuing uh, insulin therapy. And uh, the need for a good uh, postprandial control uh, right from the start, that is uh, the, the left hand side you can see the cycle uh, going on uh, that is called the glycemic triad which is the fasting plasma glucose and the, the postprandial plasma glucose and the HPA1C. This triad is called the glycemic triad and that results from a meta-analysis that increased uh, postprandial uh, glucose and uh, fasting uh, plasma glucose drive uh, an increase in the A1C. And the postprandial glucose uh, has a stronger correlation with HbA1c than the fasting because most of the times we we uh, had gone through the slide uh, showing that uh, majority of the time uh, the Indian uh, patient uh, is in the postprandial state rather than in the fasting state. So the shortcomings of basal insulin actually is these are the pitfalls. Uh, if you use the basal insulin actually, so the on the left hand side you can see the basal insulin. So the basal insulin is actually the, they inhibit uh, the hepatic uh, glucose production at the level of liver and they lower the fasting plasma glucose and then what about uh, postprandial plasma glucose. Basal insulin is good to start with along with the existing VADs. There are multiple rhythms, uh, the, the algorithms. Uh, to initiate insulin, so uh, out of which uh, the basic one is the basal insulin or uh, the second thing is uh, the biphasic premixed insulin or uh, the, the next one is the basal bolus insulin regime and, and finally the, the best out of the world is uh, this co-formulation, the one and only the insulin uh, aspart and insulin degludic, it is a combination of both. So, Basal uh, only uh, therapy is inadequate to address the challenges of Indian reality. 75% of the patients fail to achieve a target A1C at one year when initiated with only basal insulin. And uh, these are the indices for holistic choice of insulin therapy. The holistic choice uh, uh, of insulin therapy in the center. Uh, the, the, so, uh, the, the lower hypoglycemia, the, it should have the the qualities uh, like what I am going to mention. On the one hand, you should have uh, a lower incidence of hypoglycemia and meal time flexibility and the regime must be very simple and uh, uh, the, the convenience of the disease is very important and better quality of life it should offer and it should be cost effective and uh, it should be very efficacious.
these are all the the ideal uh, the, the, the characteristics of an ideal insulin therapy and uh, with this uh, i finished my talk and uh, thank you so much for patient listening and uh, uh, any uh, questions or queries uh, please uh, type in the chat box so that uh, we'll take up the qa session at the end uh, after the second speaker uh, finishes uh, her talk so i'll hand over the uh, session to ma'am